There we go. There we go. There's our volume. I apologize. I don't know why I didn't go through. Volume should be there. Yes, it is. All right, whatever. Not quite sure what the story is, but ladies and gentlemen, what I have here for you guys is on my website. So what I did yesterday, since I believe there's going to be people that need to know how to do some what? Use your calculator. Remember, we have that S portion. We went over yesterday how to do that. But what I have here, let's find it. Let's go all the way down. Let's go to the browser. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There we go, I think. Was it there? And we have to hit refresh. Let's see if we have it. Uh-huh. Yep, hit refresh. There we go. Under law of cosines, I did a general worksheet here for you guys. I'll put that in the, oh, whatever section, comment section. Okay. For those people. And what I'm going to say now, I'm going to go over to the iPad. We're going to warm up, ladies and gentlemen, on using that TI calculator. Because again, there's going to be people that can't use their calculator. So what I have here for us this morning for the S portion, like I said yesterday, we're going to do a little bit of the S supplement using our calculator. So let's read the instructions here, okay? As some warm up here. Um, you're going to solve for, is that Ann? It should be here. Uh, whatever. Okay. There we go. You're going to solve for theta. Okay. So in every one of these here, you solve for the angle. Now, if I said to you, how do you do that? From yesterday, what did we do? You want to solve for theta. What did you guys use here? Right? What do you notice? If this is cosine, how do you get to the angle theta? Because you want to get the angle theta. Yes, you're going to use what? Inverse cosine. Is that true? And then similarly, you got sine. What do you think you're going to use here? How do we get theta if it's sine of theta? This is function notation. So how do you guys think we get theta? Inverse what? This is inverse. Remember, these are inverse functions. They're not reciprocal. So these are some inverse function keys on that calculator. And then if it's tangent, what do you guys use again? The inverse tangent key. These are inverse functions. These are not reciprocal. Okay, so it's not, it's not using cosecant, secant, cotangent. These are inverse function notation. So what I'm going to have you guys warm up this morning on is the first eight. Use your what? Use your calculator. And how are you going to approximate your answers? To the nearest what? Yeah. It, well, first of all, you're going to approximate the answers to the nearest tenths, but make sure your calculator is in what mode? What mode do you want the calculator to be? in degree mode, okay? 
So, I mean, they didn't say that in the instructions, but I'm saying that now. So we're going to warm up here because, you know, it's a good warm up to do to be able to use your calculator. And um, remember this, it's not even, it's not even math, really. It's the calculator's doing the math. So try that out. We'll give you guys some time. And I'm going to give you guys the first eight there to do. And we'll see how you go. This is the S. Welcome to S supplement. And that's not what I want. I want a clock. Okay. We'll give you guys some supplementary work to do just to use your calculator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's try this out. Okay, you guys see this first question? Cosine of the angle is this number here. Okay, it is 0.867. So let me go do this. I'm going to erase this here for you guys. <coughs> okay. So what that means is by using this inverse function notation, all right, what this means by definition, you can write down the angle theta will be the inverse cosine of that 0.867. So it's a, a lecture on reading and using your calculator. Okay, so your angle theta now, you can get that angle theta by using your calculator. But you're going to have to use the, the inverse. That's an inverse. It's not a reciprocal. And, you know, the book does this to you in an, any trig course um, before they actually have you work with a lot of detail of inverse functions. Anyway, that's unfortunate, but okay. So it has to be. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, or is the mode is the mode what it's supposed to be? Do we know? Let's go here. So make sure your mode is in what? Is it in degrees? Yep, it's in degrees. Okay. All right. So we're gonna say inverse cosine. It's the second key. You see that cosine? That's not reciprocal. And the input is now 0.867. Close that up. And what do you guys get? What angle is this? This angle is what? We're approximating to the tenth. So it's 29.9 or 8.9. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. 29.9. And there it is. This is the angle that you're looking for okay so this is kind of how we work with this and that's the first one so it gives us an angle okay working with that inverse cosine function so what about the next one you say okay well let's see what do we got here all right so for number two 
right? What do we write down for number two? Theta will be inverse sine. That's inverse sine of what's the decimal? 0.354. So we're going to see what theta becomes here. Okay, this is going to be for number two now. This is number one. We got number two. We want to see how to use our calculator. And all right, so let's try this out. So second inverse sine of what number? 0.354, close that up. And ladies and gentlemen, what's the angle again? 20 point what? 20.7 degrees. All right, so there's the angle. Okay, so now you're going to use, again, the inverse sine function on this one. So number three, which one, which one do you use for number three? The inverse tangent. Okay, inverse tangent, and the decimal is 0.125. So that's the number that goes in here. Again, you're using inverse tangent to get the angle theta. And this is an exercise in using the, the calculator. And so, okay, second inverse tangent point one, two, five, and close that. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you get now? 7.1. All right. So that angle is approximately 7.1 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle. So what do you guys think, ladies and gentlemen? Is that kind of simple? Do you guys know what I'm saying? Is that kind of easy peasy or, again, it's using your calculator. Okay, so you're learning even how to use that calculator to make these computations. Um, so, you know, I, I did a whole list of problems here for people, you know, and one day, who knows, we'll make sure People do all of them, I guess. And number four, you're back to the, the, the starting point. So in other words, we're going to have inverse cosine for number four of 0.678. Okay, so this is inverse cosine. So in the TI, again, second inverse cosine point six seven eight. So it's forty seven point something degrees. Forty seven point three degrees here. All right, what's the next one? Number what? Number five, what's theta gonna be for number five? It's gonna be inverse, inverse sine 0.525 for number five. Okay, so let's use the TI again. All right, so inverse sine, so second, inverse sine, 0.525, close, oops. Uh, I guess we have to delete that. Yeah. Go back, delete. There we go. Close the parentheses. And what'd you guys get? To the nearest tenths. What's your angle? 31 point what? 7 degrees. Ah. All right. Number five, what's number six? Inverse tangent for number six? Inverse 
inverse tangent, the decimal is 0.387. So let's see what this is going to be here. It's number six, inverse tangent, using our calculator. Okay. Second, inverse tangent, point what? 387 there. And so you end up with getting what? 21 point what? Is that 21.2 degrees for number six? Is that what you guys get for that one? Did I make a mistake? 21.2? Let's see, did we make a mistake? Let's see, double check. Number six. Ah, you know what it you know what it is? No. 0.387? Yeah. Let me see if we, right? You guys see what I'm saying? Is it maybe the highlighters help a little bit? So let's see number seven here is cosine. So we have to use inverse cosine. And then the number's point, what, eight, nine, eight here. So for number seven now, all right, cosine theta is 0.898. So how do we get theta? Use the inverse cosine key. Point 0.898. 26.2. One degrees. Is that true? So what is eight? Sine is point one two two. So we're gonna use inverse sine point one two two. So, calculators. Inverse sine point one two two. And what do you end up with? What is this? Seven point zero degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. This is how you handle this question here. This is number eight. Number seven, so, you know. So go through that, ladies and gentlemen, and understand that this is how you find an angle using the inverse function. Um, I wanna point out number, for example, um, let's look at number 13 here, okay? Number 13 is interesting. What should you see as an answer for number 13? We talked about it yesterday. 13 and 14 have the same answers. These are no solutions. Right, because cosine can't be bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1, and, that, and neither for sine. So this should be no solution, ladies and gentlemen, for both of these, okay? Now, let's say you forget this fact, right? Let's say you forget and you go, oh, my God, Mr. Judge, I, I'm using my calculator because people forget, right? So for like, for example, number 13, you might say, hey, theta is inverse cosine of 1.284, okay? I'm trying to find theta. And it's going to be the inverse cosine key. And say, so you go, you know what? You're going to use your calculator. And you're going to punch that in. So we're going to get uh, cosine. And you put 1.284. Okay? And what do you get here? You get an error. 
And at least, you know, you know, it, it, here's the problem. This is error, the error domain. And what that means is you're not allowed to use that number in what's called the domain of the function, the input of the function. There's a domain error. And it even says valued enters is not allowed in the function. And OK, that makes a lot of sense. You say, what do you mean that makes a lot of sense? Well, because cosine could not be bigger than one. It can't be smaller than negative one either. And the same thing for sine. But what do you guys notice about tangent? So if you did it for sine, you'll get no solution as well. But what about number 15 for tangent? Just to give you guys comparison and contrast. You might think the same thing applies to tangent. It doesn't. It just applies to sine and cosine. So for inverse tangent, yes. If you said, I'm going to get this angle theta, you can. And punch it in. Notice this. We say, okay, second inverse tangent. I guess I have to clear that out first. Second inverse tangent, 1.682. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you get? 59 point what? Three degrees. So that rule only applies to what? Sine and cosine, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't apply to the other functions. Okay? Because what I gave you guys yesterday is this fact. I'll give it to you guys again. Number one, part of our S, is that negative one is less than or equal to sine of any angle which is less than or equal to positive one. Same thing for cosine. Sines and cosine live between these two numbers, but they don't, it doesn't apply to tangent. You know, so, yeah, look, 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 at, the, look at the graph. Um, if you go back to the graph, our whole graphing concept, right? If you go back and you go, okay, why is that, right? Look at, this is stuff I use for the calculus students. Um, y equals, for example, sine, right? Oops, let's get the functions here. Let's say y is sine, and, and they don't use theta, they use x, okay? Now, that's our sine curve. It's not a restricted domain. It's periodic. Um, and I'm going to put y equals 1, and it's in red, and I like that. And usually there is a, there we go. Here's what I'm saying. You see this horizontal line, right? It hits your curve for, for, for what values of y. The y-axis there is y between negative 1 and positive 1. You guys with me on that? And so, you know, that's the range of the function. And then again, you say, okay, what about y equals function cosine? And let's get rid of the sine curve now. Notice the same exact thing. Okay, you're going to hit the value for sine and cosine between positive 1 and negative 1. That's the range of the function. But then you go, well, what about tangent? Well, tangent, the function is different. It has a different domain and range. For tangent, take a look, right? Remember this? The tangent curves we drew, we only drew really one cycle. The range for tangent, ladies and gentlemen, it could be as all real numbers. The range, all the y values, all real numbers for tangent. So that's why you can do this all day long. You go, what do you mean? They can say, hey, what is tangent? I'll put that as a note just so you guys can understand that. You go, hey, what if they give me tangent theta is negative 32.187. Okay, can I get a theta? What angle? Yes, we can. We could use inverse what? 32.187. Okay, we're going to get an angle theta. Now, using our TI, we can say, Second inverse tangent, negative now, 
0.187 here. So we get a, we get a negative angle, negative 88.2 degrees. Okay, and we'll we'll cover this in more detail, but ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of what we get here for this. You know, we can't do that for sine and cosine. If you say, what about sine? Well, it's not, it's going to give you no solution here. Say, what about, or sine is going to be a negative 45.189 maybe. Well, we, it does, it's not defined for that value. It's not in the range, right? It's outside the range of sine but it's not outside the range for tangent. And again, it's the range of the function. That's, that's what that is. What, what's that? Well, sine and cosine, the range is between, this is, this is really describing what's called the range of the function. And you say, what's the range? It's a set of all y values for which the function is defined. Domain and range. And like I said, you can see the range really by simply looking at the function. It's always the corresponding y values. What happened to our function? There it is. Okay. It's all, and you draw this horizontal line where you hit the y axis and the curve for those values of x. If we look at all those details, that's the range of the function. Same thing for cosine. That's the range of the values. And you go, but how come tangent's different? Because it has a different graph. Yeah, the range is all real numbers. Where, where's our, where's the value? Where's the red? Oh, there it is. And you say, how do you know the range is all real numbers? Look at the graph. You hit, you hit, you know, the curve for all those y values you draw that horizontal line that's really what the range is it's all real numbers that's the y values the y axis values and and this is an important detail you know generally speaking but in particular